In this video, I interview JP Sears to talk about how to be authentic and be yourself and still get videos with over 60 million views right now. What's up influencers here with another amazing interview with JP Sears of Awaken with JP on YouTube. How to go through a breakup. Why do some people run from good relationships? I'd like to talk to you today about self-awareness. The Olympic Games are a competition that unites the world by creating clear lines of division between the superior nations and the inferior ones. The three most important things in my life are God, my family, and my Instagram account and not necessarily in that order. Thank you so much for letting me interview you. You're welcome, brother. I'm happy to be here and I'm glad that you're weird enough to want to interview me. I'm totally weird. Anyways, so the reason I want to interview JP, other than the fact that he's a longtime friend of mine, a fellow YouTuber is, he's got an amazing channel. JP, can you share with us a little bit about your channel and what you do on it? Yeah, it, so it's a gentle hybrid of two things, comedy videos with a deeper message and sincere heartfelt videos yeah. uh, where I'm just giving life advice, sharing my perspectives in a direct, sincere way. So those are two parts that make up the whole of my channel. Totally. And one of the things I love about JP's channel, especially when I first met you, you were putting out content that typically most people wouldn't think of putting out on a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and now you've grown to be very, very popular, not just with that type of content, but also your comedy. Can you share with the audience your journey from starting at zero subscribers to over uh, 300,000 subscribers on yeah. YouTube? Yeah, well, first part of my journey was meeting this man. So <laughs> Benji, when I met you, Benji, I had, we were in Kauai, yep, actually, yep. all lovely places. I had 800 uh, subscribers then. 800? Yeah, so that was in my first year. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's, that's good growth, and I'm yeah. still so proud of that. And that was at the time before you had video influencers. Yep. So I was very fortunate to begin soaking in your video influencer <laughs> vibes thank you um you know at that time so my uh, the other parts of my journey were basically uh, being true to my heart what what my heart wants to voice through the canvas of video so that to me has been most important and i started off the first year and a half of my channel only doing the serious life advice stuff i mean in a light-hearted way but heavy topics like yeah. how to get over depression how to heal from a breakup you know anxiety topics things like that then about a year and a half into doing those sorts of videos i started to give myself more permission to let mm. i would say in a way the real me but i would more accurately say let another part of me come out on camera which is the comedy part yeah. and i had told myself a story that it would be bad for business if I let my sense of humor come out on camera. You know, bad for you know the business. Of, at the time, I was just working with clients doing emotional yeah. healing work. Like, oh, an emotional healer, you've got to be serious. You have to say important things, but you got to be boring. <laughs> That's what I told myself. <laughs> so, yeah, the journey, once I did the first comedy video most importantly aside from it starting to really reach a wider audience most importantly is it felt so satiating inside of me to get have this creative expression of i think insight spoken through the language mm -hmm. of comedy yeah. satirical comedy so uh, you know i i'm selfish the reason why i keep doing comedy videos is they're very very intrinsically satisfying to me mm -hmm. so thank you so much for sharing your story uh, i love that you brought up that when we met years ago you're at 800 subscribers i know there's viewers here uh, that want to create youtube channels that have youtube channels maybe that have less than a thousand subscribers uh, why i think that's so fitting for this interview to talk about is even though you had 800 subscribers you might how many views were you getting at the time oh at the time you know if i put out a video yeah. it would be in the hundreds of yeah. views you know at the time i probably had a couple of videos that had topped into four figures you know a thousand yeah. views and that was 
great for me at the yeah. time, for yeah. sure. And the reason I love that story is because I know that even with your low amount of subscribers, that you actually had opportunities behind the scenes, a business model beyond the videos that helped create a lifestyle for you, or I would say like a business for you. Can you talk a little bit about that? And if, you, if you're if you um, open, share sure. with us, you know, what that experience was like and what you do. Yeah, so my business agenda, a few years ago when I started my YouTube channel is I'm thinking, okay, I do emotional healing work with clients. I work with people all over the world via Skype. So video would be a great way to get more people to be aware of me. So I started my YouTube channel and it, it was probably about six months, maybe nine months before I got any business from YouTube. You know, people seen me on YouTube get into my website see okay you do you know emotional healing work with clients so um that was the first way that i really made money from youtube and and it was you know it took consistent effort for that six to nine month period of you know not seeing any return on investment which i was totally okay with it's so satisfying to yeah. do video um but yeah and now now i have you know i'm very blessed to say that I get, uh, I have way more business demand, especially in the one-on-one -on -one client yeah. business from YouTube than I can possibly handle, yeah. which is probably a, a good first world problem to have. <laughs> Absolutely, especially on YouTube. Um, and, you know, the reason I appreciate you sharing that story is because uh, I like to, you know, let people know that there's so much opportunity that can be created with a YouTube channel, mm. right? Um, with a business that lives outside of your YouTube. A lot of people rely on the AdWords yeah. um, income um, or getting sponsored or that's what they feel like that's the way you make it or that's the way you can create a business. But this is a great example, um, JP story, of things that you can create, opportunities for yourself um, because of the views you get, even at less than a thousand views. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, my in video influencers. I mean, you guys are the um, the wizards here. So I'm. Well, thank you. <laughs> pre preaching to the choir who sings better than me. But yeah, the, the sponsorships and things like that. Those those come with the the bigger numbers. But I absolutely agree. There is so much opportunity business wide wise even when you're getting very few views if those are quality views the people who you can reach to sell your product service whatever it is it's like you know 30 views can be more valuable than 30,000 views uh, if you can capitalize with those 30 quality views even with 30 views I love what you said the fact that it could be more valuable than getting maybe 30,000 views yeah because those views are quality views though when i say quality views those are viewers that potentially might either buy your product spend money on you or hire you for like consult consulting or in your case counseling correct yeah, yeah. for sure yeah, yeah and like thirty thousand views if you're just making money on adsense like thirty thousand views that's like that's a good amount of views but you're making virtually no money on mm -hmm. Google AdSense with 30,000 views. So it's it, it's so important to realize like yeah. those 30 views can be much better. Yeah, I'm a firm believer that uh, YouTube as a platform is much more powerful as a marketing tool mm. for your business or uh, your career even than using YouTube as your main source of income. Yeah definitely more realistic for most people because not everybody becomes a Casey Neistat uh, or you know like a daily vlogger or ultra spiritual JP you know with that being said I love the fact that you can also share your experiences of getting a ton of views because the other part of your channel which is a comedy side can you talk about ultra spiritual JP which a lot of you guys might actually know of um, and tell us about that side of your channel. Yeah, so that side of my channel, it's comedy based. Therefore, it, it just seems to get a, a bigger viewership. There's a more horizontal appeal for those comedy videos. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah, and you know, for me, that side of the channel, it's all about sharing an insight through the satirical language of humor, and uh, and you know, I, I hate to sound like a, a broken record, but that part of the channel is very very satisfying to the inner creative kind of like the cre my yeah. relationship with my creative muse the those comedy videos are my canvas that i paint on you know i'm not a artist in the traditional music or painting sense but i do really consider uh, those videos my artistic expression and yeah those videos have also been a, a gateway to get a lot of people to find my more serious videos i i get a lot of people that say jp i know i found your channel through the ultra spiritual yeah. videos i didn't know you did serious videos and now i'm confused are you silly or are you serious i'm like well i'm both mm -hmm. uh there there are two parts that help make up the whole of me just like i have a left hand and a right hand yeah. i have both hands so and i realize that's sort of like non-traditional maybe even non-ideal for youtube but it, it but it's just me and for me it's so important in my creative expressions to honor me and the inner voices and angles of my heart that uh, i want to speak from yeah i think uh, you bring up a good point because you're right some people would perceive that even yourself in the beginning you were questioning you're asking me is this really ideal for my channel yeah. to bring in ultra spiritual jp you hit it right on the head of the nail. It doesn't actually matter if it's ideal or not. It's yeah. it's what you want to do, and that's what I love about YouTube. You can create your own rules, right? Or you can live by no rules. You can just do what you want. Interesting enough, because you followed your heart, you fault, you created a, a content you're passionate about. The outcome was you got a lot of popularity and it became a hook to gain a new audience to find the other content sure right and uh, that's what I uh, that's what I love about ultra spiritual JP is because it has grown into its own identity right yeah. and it hasn't necessarily overshadowed the other content It's probably brought in way more views to that other content that you otherwise would never have had Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, during a recent live uh, broadcast I did, you know, talking to old viewers and new v viewers, I reminded the new viewers like, hey, I do serious videos too. And when you see those pop up on your feed, uh, don't watch them if you don't want to. <laughs> uh, you know, if you just want to go for the comedy, then by yeah. all means. Yeah. And if you're, some people are just into the serious videos. So it's like, yeah, I'm not at all about trying to you know manipulate my audience into watching all my stuff it's like no by all means i invite you to watch the the um, elements of my stuff that you want to watch whether yeah. that's part of it or all of it so jp you know another thing that i think is going to be fun to talk about is facebook mm. so about a year ago uh, I know that you had some hesitations about uploading to Facebook and we talked about you know the growth of video on Facebook so can you share with us uh, what those hesitations were and now a year later what's happened especially with one of your videos going viral yeah so it was almost like exactly one year ago I'm on the phone with Benji he's like JP Facebook video, it's big, it's going to just get nothing but enormous, you got to get on it. And I'm yeah. like, oh, Benji, don't tell me that, I don't want to hear it. You know, my hesitation was, like, I'm a YouTube purist, and it would do nothing but hurt my YouTube channel mm -hmm. if I'm uploading videos to Facebook. It would detract uh, traffic, and yeah. I'm like, I, I want to honor my YouTube channel. So, you know, probably six months later, actually probably longer than that, eight, nine months later, Finally, I started uploading some of my videos to uh, Facebook, and it's natively too. Natively, yeah. absolutely, not just sharing the YouTube links, but natively right onto Facebook, yeah. and that has done nothing but absolute genius magic for not only my Facebook uh, page, but also my YouTube channel. Like I, I was completely wrong a year ago, yeah. and I was trying to resist what you were saying. It has been a massive growth catalyst for driving more traffic to my YouTube channel. Yeah. Just su it's very surprising. Yeah, and just to uh, uh, you know, add to that, you have over 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. However, that video plus a lot of the other uploads 
to Facebook has grown your Facebook audience to over 800,000. Yeah. Right? One thing I'm a huge believer, and this is one reason why we didn't call this YouTube influencers. We called yeah. it video influencers. A lot of the platforms, if not all of them, are really integrating video into the user experience. And that's not going to change. In fact, you know, with the success you've had, that one video having 60 million views, yeah. right? One Facebook video, 60 million views is a perfect example um, that you can actually create more opportunity for exposure on other platforms. Part, for sure. Yeah, partly because of the competitiveness of the YouTube platform. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's kind of like the, the lesson I take away from that, you know, utilizing the magic of Facebook rather than to try to fight it is if you want new audiences, you know, YouTubers are always yeah. saying, how can I reach new mm. audiences? Businesses are always yeah. saying, how can I reach new audiences? Put videos on Facebook that are shareable when the most valuable part of Facebook video is when a follower of mine shares it. Now I'm reaching a new audience, which is great for the growth of my Facebook, which is great for the growth of my YouTube, which is great for the growth of my business. New audiences, it's like a new frontier of audiences yeah. that the the magic of Facebook shareability offers us. Absolutely. My and you know, that's the thing, the shareability. I mean, you can share YouTube videos, but not the same way as you can share on Facebook. And when Absolutely. you're sharing on Facebook, you're sharing with friends and family. So they're going to be much more receptive on Facebook because of the uh, the user behavior, the way people treat that platform. So thank you so much mm. for that. I want to uh, lastly finish with the lightning. Mm. You just scared me. <laughs> that, when you said lightning, it was just so, so shocking to me. If you had to give up one thing, would you give up movies for the rest of your life or social media for the rest of your life? I'd give up movies. In a zombie apocalypse, what is the one thing you'd want to have? Man, that's a, a great question. I would probably say a fresh pair of pants because the first sight of a zombie, I'm probably going to poop my pants. Last thing you remember grabbing out of the fridge? I think uh, organic lettuce. <laughs> what were you doing with organic lettuce? Oh, I... Like, where are you thinking? Like, I ate it. Like, what else do you do with organic lettuce? I just said, like, you need to check out Benji Man Food TV to learn about, like, what you do with lettuce, Benji. Okay. Coffee or tea? My mind and taste buds go better with coffee, but my body does better with tea. Screw my body. I'm going with coffee. Dog or cat? Dog. Current favorite YouTube channel? Yeah, I'm going to have to go Casey Neistat. I mean, I really got big into him after I saw your interview. Oh, Really? with them on cool. video influencers so much so much inspiration from casey that guy just bleeds out creativity he bleeds out authenticity i'm like i want to soak up some of that casey blood this has been a gruesome analogy especially with like the <laughs> chainsaws in the background so. one book you would suggest to people that want to do what we do uh jab jab right hook by gary vaynerchuk loved your interview with him by the way like, I think I'm brainwashed by video influencers. <laughs> yes. I ignore everything in life, everything on social media that you guys haven't introduced to me. So JP, uh, I would love for you to be able to share with our audience about how important it is to be authentic, right? You know, we talk uh, about uh, people trying to copycat other people's content and how the most power, uh, you know, the most special type of content you can bring to the world is through being authentic. Can you speak yeah. to that? I, I honestly think that one of the great purposes of life is to be authentic. I think there's a reason why you are on planet Earth. There's a re reason why you are not a clone of anybody else. And when it relates to video and content creation, I do believe the best thing for business, the best thing for creativity, is for you to wiggle deeper into your authenticity, find inspiration from other people, yet don't duplicate them. I think the more we try to act like other people, like, well, let me do things Casey Neistat's way or Benji's way, the more we hide our true self from the world. And the more we hide our true self from the world, our authenticity, the less the outer world, the potential audience has to connect with because we're just just expressing a facade and I don't think that's sustainable 
Uh, so I do think, you know, the, the best service we can give to ourselves is to let ourselves be our weird, authentic self. Boom. Thank you so much, JP. Appreciate it. Awaken with JP is the way people can find you on social, correct? Yeah, all my social media is Awaken with JP. So you can either find me there, or if you find me incredibly offensive, then be sure to <laughs> ignore everything Awaken with JP on social media. And we'll put all the links down below. And remember, we love the questions that you guys have for us. So put down below what are the questions you have either for JP or myself. And thank you so much for watching. Remember, here on Video Influencers, helping you build your influence influence, income, and impact with online videos. I have a bird that's like having a heart attack in my backyard. Like the bird's like this. <laughs> I, I insist that there's more background noises. We only have a chainsaw. Some other thing. I think it's like a guy killing his wife. Then a jeep driving an occasional seaplane. Mm. Creators are hesitant to upload video a lot <laughs> a lot of viewers <laughs> that might be an elephant dying